Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis. And I'm the pastor here at Bold. And we're thrilled that you could join us today for worship. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here, and I'm glad you're able to join us today. Hi, I'm Brenda. I'm the pastor at Bethel Lutheran Church and very happy to be here and joining you at Bold this morning. And I'm David Evans, sign language interpreter. Today is January 17th, and we have three special things going on. First, this is the second week of Epiphany. And we celebrate Epiphany when years ago, the wise men saw the bright star in the sky and followed it till they found the baby Jesus. Secondly, we also will celebrate the Lord's Supper today. And then finally, we have a special guest with us this morning, Pastor Brenda, who we're grateful could join us today. Welcome, Pastor Brenda. Thank you, Deacon Dorothy, Pastor Michelle, and Bold. I am very excited to join you in worship with Bold today. And I am so glad that Bethel and Bold are continuing to develop our relationship together and our partnership in ministry. We appreciate you being here. Old friends, I have been the pastor here at Bread of Life for a little over four years. And in that time, I have observed your curiosity, your desire to learn. And so we partner with Bethel as one of the ways that our congregation can learn with another congregation. Deacon Dorothy is saying, Bold and Bethel together have been participating in cross-cultural learning workshops and other activities together, spending time together, having conversations, celebrating worship and even Lent together. And not only conversations, but asking each other questions to learn about one another takes a lot of patience and persistence to do that work, and it is worth it. Pastor Michelle is saying, there are times, however, where maybe it feels like it's not worth it. There are times where we feel frustrated with one another. There are times where we wonder whether the struggle is actually worth it because it takes effort and work to maintain a relationship. That is very true. And we are not alone. Tomorrow is MLK Junior Day, Martin Luther King Junior Day. And I'm reminded how hard 
that King and all the others in the civil rights movement in the late 60s and 70s worked. Their hard work, the lives lost, helped bring our society closer, closer in our goal of equity for all. We know that we have not achieved these goals, but we must continue. We must continue to stand up for what we believe. And part of that is building relationship with one another. Deacon Dorothy is saying, reaching for equality takes patience and persistence and lots of prayer. So we ask and invite you to pray this week for our country. You may be wondering what you should pray for. Pastor Michelle saying, pray for the peaceful transition of power from our current president to the incoming president. I would like us to pray for anti-racism work to honor all people, regardless of skin color. And Dorothy's saying, for the commitment to patience, for conversations that can help us understand and appreciate one another. Michelle is saying, yes, please keep praying. Remember that today we will celebrate the Lord's Supper So if you haven't gotten your bread and your cup ready yet, go ahead and gather those now. Yes, and also light a candle at home as we light a candle here today to begin worship together. In this season of waiting, of longing, of looking for you to come into our world, we are seeking light. In our own lives, our neighborhoods, our families, we are seeking light. In our work, our country, our world, we are seeking light. Jesus promises that when we seek, you shall find, knock, and the door will be opened, ask, and it will be given to you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, One God, source of life that gave us birth. Fountain of living water.
our light and to our salvation. Prayer for the day. God of all nations and countries, teach us how to love the people of earth of all colors and all kinds, those with technology and those without. those who survive with very little, and those who use many resources, those with formal educations, and those without. Those who call upon your name, and those who do not. Teach us how to love so that your children may be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who brings glory and liberty. Christ is our salvation. Amen. Just before today's gospel lesson, Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness, discerning his ministry. What is God calling Jesus to do? How will Jesus do that? Who will Jesus go to? What will he do in those places? Before Jesus started preaching and teaching and healing, he wrestled with all of those and other questions so that when he went out ministering, Jesus knew what his goal would be. In our lesson for today, we see that Jesus has gone from town to town, teaching in the synagogues, and is gaining a good reputation as a prophet. And today, he goes to his hometown. Although things start out well, when Jesus begins to tell stories about what happened to other prophets in their hometowns, the crowd started to get angry with Jesus. Even though Jesus was simply telling the truth, the hometown crowd gets emotional and upset with him. So much so that they want to throw him off a cliff. At the end of this reading, when the crowd is ready to throw Jesus off the cliff, Jesus simply walks away from them, unharmed. I have no idea how this happened. I do not know how Jesus did this, but he did. He walked away from an angry crowd, unharmed, and he continued to tell the truth the truth of love, even while hanging on the cross. Today's Bible lesson comes to us from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 30. Jesus returned to Galilee with the power of the Spirit. News about him spread everywhere. He taught in the Jewish meeting places, and everyone praised him. Jesus went back to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as usual, 
he went to the meeting place on the Sabbath. When he stood to read from the scriptures, he was given the book of Isaiah, the prophet. He opened it up and read. The Lord's spirit has come to me because he has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. The Lord has sent me to announce freedom for the prisoners and to give sight to the blind, to free everyone who suffers, and to say, this is the year the Lord has chosen. Jesus closed the book and then handed it back to the man in charge and sat down. Everyone in the meeting place looked straight at Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, What you have just heard me read today has come true. All the people started talking about Jesus. They were amazed at the wonderful things he said. And they kept asking, isn't he Joseph's son? Jesus answered, you will certainly want to tell me this saying, doctor, first, make yourself well. You will tell me to do the same things here in my own hometown that you heard I have done in Capernaum. But you can be sure that no prophet is liked by the people in their own hometown. Once, during the time of Elijah, there was no rain for three and a half years, and people everywhere were starving. There were many widows in Israel, but Elijah was sent only to a widow in the town of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. During the time of the prophet Elisha, many men in Israel had leprosy. But no one was healed except Naaman who lived in Syria. When the people in the meeting place heard Jesus say this, they became so angry that they got up and they threw him out of town. They dragged him to the edge of the cliff on which the town was built because they wanted to throw him down from there. But Jesus slipped through the crowd and got away. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
the truth of Jesus keeps us whole. The love of Jesus gives us hope and empowers us in our everyday lives to love all others without exception. In our lesson for today, Jesus retells the story of when the hometown prophets came to the place where they were born and raised. And in each of these stories, those hometown prophets were hard to believe. Why? Because we watched these kids grow up. There's nothing special about them. They're just normal, goofy, troublemaking kids. They're not supposed to be prophets of God. Jesus? Jesus was just Joseph's son. No one's special or set apart. And certainly not holy. The people in our lesson find it hard to believe that a hometown kid, Jesus, could be anything special. Certainly not the son of God. Not the one who was sent to proclaim good news to the poor or provide freedom for the prisoners, produce sight for the blind and promise that those oppressed will be set free. Yet in our reading today, Jesus claims to be that very person sent by God, the Messiah, our Savior, and the answer to all of our prayers. That did not make sense to the hometown crowd, and they began to question Jesus' authority. And the more Jesus tells them the truth, the more emotional the crowd gets, taking offense at what he is sharing. And they tried to quiet him down. How? Well, they tried to quiet him down by throwing him off a cliff. Now, for those of us who live after the death, death and resurrection of Jesus, it is not so difficult to believe. We know now through faith that Jesus is the son of God sent to proclaim good news to the poor, to provide freedom for the prisoner, to produce sight to the blind and promise that those oppressed will indeed be set free. And it is in this truth of Jesus that keeps us whole, gives us hope and empowers us in our everyday lives to love all others without exception. Still, it is difficult to love all others without exception. As I preach this sermon on Thursday, January 14th for Bold, I wonder what will happen in the next few days at the state capitol here in Minnesota and in Washington, D.C., as we inaugurate our 46th president of the United States. The FBI is warning that there are armed groups of people planning to protest, and who knows what else, at the St. Paul Capitol building, as well as several places throughout the United States for the next week. There are armed militias who have proven themselves capable of invading the US Capitol. They caused harm and destruction and even death. And they, they feel compelled to continue to create chaos. Now, that people broke into and wreaked havoc in the United States Capitol building on January 6, 2021, it feels unbelievable. But that situation really happened. 
And many of us find ourselves shaking our head and wondering how this is possible. And still, in Jesus' love, we are called to pray in hope, to love all others without exception. Now, how, how are we going to do this? It's a huge challenge. I, for one, find comfort in something my mom often said. She said this, I always love my six children, but sometimes I do not like them very much. In this statement, my mother's voice continues to remind me that we are indeed capable of loving all others without exception, but we do not have to like everyone, especially when their behavior is not reflective of love. I do not like the actions of some of my fellow siblings in this world these days, but with God's help, with Jesus' help, I love them. This does not mean that we have to be silent of the bad behavior that is a part of our nation right now. Indeed, we are called to speak the truth just as Jesus does in our lesson today, to declare that God's love, God loves and helps the poor and the oppressed. God loves and helps the enslaved and the prisoner and those who are treated with disdain and those who are abused. With Martin Luther King Jr. Day coming up just Monday or a week from now for Bethel folks, I am grateful for the hard work and the efforts that Dr. King and others in the civil rights movement participated in in the 60s and 70s. I appreciate their hard work, the lives lost, that which helped our society become closer to the goals of equality for all. Their hard work continues to declare that God loves and helps everyone without exception. Martin Luther King Jr.'s words continue to challenge us to stand up and to speak out. He observed that we have much to repent for when he says, not only for the sins of the bad people, but also for the appalling silence of the good people. We know that we have not achieved the goals of our constitution, but we must continue to stand up for a society that honors all its members. Friends, Jesus came into this world to address the problems of people using their power and privilege to control others. Jesus confronts all that is wrong in this day, in his day and his time with love. And we are called to imitate Jesus. That means we too must confront that which is wrong in our lives and confront it with love. Now, how do we love people with whom we totally disagree? Those who attack the people who make up our government we do not like their behavior, but we are sent to love them. And how do we love them? And with others who are not following civil laws and moral behavior at this time, how do we love them? And there are still many others who continue to say that white skin is better than any other of the amazing colors God created. 
How do we love them? Well, friends, let's start and continue in prayer. God, please help us find truth in love together. Help us to listen to one another. Help us all to listen carefully and deeply to understand one another. In this way, we do not remain stuck on different sides of a political divide. Instead, we become problem solvers. With God's help, we try to meet each other part way and find what works for all of us. We must try. Now, did I mention that loving all others is not easy? Or did I note that it requires patience and persistence to maintain relationship with people with whom we disagree? Yet, loving others and being in relationship with others is what Jesus calls us to do, to share the truth that God loves you and you and you and you, to share the truth that God loves all people and to believe and to trust that this is true also for the people whom we dislike or with whom we disagree. Jesus teaches us to love all others. And that love starts with the truth of God's love. God's love is for the outsiders, the strangers, the ones we don't understand, and for the people we don't like. So in these days when there is potential for violence and unrest, or that we've experienced more violence and unrest, please focus on the love of Jesus. This love keeps us whole. It gives us hope and it leads us in our everyday lives. Indeed, God help us, help us to love. Amen. Prayers for the people. If you would, type in your prayer requests into the YouTube chat box. What people and situations do you bring to our time of prayer? Lord Jesus, light of the world, accept our prayers. Use us to reflect your light so that places of darkness in our world will have your light. 
then all nations will be drawn to you and overwhelmed with your joy. Amen. My friends, at the birth of Christ, the angels sang a song of peace and goodwill for all. And so we say now, the peace from the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Now, for those of you at home, please share peace with one another. At this time in our worship service, we invite you to prepare your offerings. Often, God shows up for us in unexpected ways and in surprising places. This message that God loves us, although today in our Bible lesson, it comes directly from Jesus, sometimes that message comes to us from strangers and from unexpected people. And here at Bread of Life, God asks us and God trusts us to give witness to this good news that God loves you and me and all people. And God asks us in particular to share this good news with the deaf community and their families. So we invite you to continue to join us in this calling. We invite you to wonder and be curious about how we can accomplish our mission. What are your ideas for how we can reach out and connect with the deaf community? because your ideas are critical to us accomplishing our mission. Just as your financial support is critical to do this work. It is not free and we need your help. So we ask that you consider how God is leading you to um, support Bread of Life, and you can send a check or use PayPal to make a donation to Bread of Life. Let us pray. Good teacher, in your life, you show us how to live. To live with compassion, peace, and generosity. Bless our gifts with your love so we can use it for your purpose in our world. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord.
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new. In the day when the Redeemer comes to judge the world, to judge with righteousness, you will make all things new. And so with the choirs of angels, with the hosts of heaven, with the church, on earth, we praise your name. And join in their unending hymn. We invite you to join signing the Holy Holy. This will not be voiced. Of Jesus last night when he gathered together to eat with his friends and followers he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread thanked God blessed it broke it and gave it for his disciples to eat saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer. This will not be voiced. We are many, and because we take the one bread, we become one body in Christ. Come and eat. Be filled with Christ's light and life. You are all invited to this table because this table belongs to God. And we are honored to share it with anyone who desires to feast. When you serve one another with the bread, please use language similar to body of Christ given for you. And with the cup, please use language 
blood of Christ shed for you. And for those of you at home alone, I will administer the bread and the cup for you now. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are generous. With the bread and the cup, you take care of us and connect us with Christ and with one another. Now you send us out in the power of your spirit. Give us courage and enthusiasm to share your amazing love with the world. Help us remember that we are connected with Christ every day. Amen. God gathers us together and God sends us from this place. As you go, receive this blessing. God of glory lives in you, names you beloved, and shines brightly on your path. Amen. Go in peace, love and serve the Lord, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.